All right, as I mentioned on the last uh, video clip, <clears throat> the next one would be on electrocardiography, which uh, a lot of times we know better as ECG or EKG. The K comes from the uh, German form of the word, which has a K instead of a C. And um, of course, we've all heard of these before. And uh, these are measurements that are made of the electrical activity around the heart. So when you see the tracing from an electrocardiogram or an ECG, um, it is not a, a measurement of contraction of the heart. It's not the muscular beating of the heart. It's actually these electrical changes that take place. So it's really a composite of all the action potentials that are being generated um, around the heart by the nodal and contractile cells. Nodal here is referring to like the SA node and the AB node. So it's those cells that are within the intrinsic conduction system. And then of course your contractile cells are all your cardiac muscle cells which make up by far the bulk of the walls of the atria and the ventricles. All right, so when you look at a typical ECG tracing, you know, it kind of looks like this. You have a little wave there and then you have a bigger wave like that. And then you have another wave over here. That's one cycle. And then you see that repeated again. And that first wave that you see right there is called the P wave. And what you're seeing there, that is a tracing. So a patient gets hooked up to electrodes that can change these subtle electrical um, activities that are occurring around the heart. The P wave is occurring because um, depolarization is occurring at the SA node. Um, and around your atria as well, SA node and the atria. Um, then you have a little delay, because remember when we were looking at how the intrinsic conduction system work, we, works, we said that um, you have uh, a pause once that action potential hits the AV node. It gets delayed temporarily before it then spreads down the AV bundles and into the uh, AV bundle, I'm sorry. Um, and into the uh, bundle branches and then into the Purkinje fibers that extend through the walls of the ventricles. So you got a little delay here. That's why you have a flat line there. And then you have what's called the QRS complex. That's that big piece in the center. And what you're seeing there is depolarization of the ventricles. And um, then finally you have a third peak over here and that is called the T wave and that represents ventricular repolarization. So you also see a wave that's generated on the tracing due to the electrical changes when the walls of the ventricles repolarize. They get reset and go back to normal. Okay, and here's another look. Diagram from your textbook showing what I just went over. And, um, and again, this gets repeated. You have this cycle that occurs. These are the electrical cycling that is associated with one heartbeat. Just keep in mind you're measuring the electrical activity around the heart. You're not actually measuring on an ECG contraction force of the heart. And again, so there's your typical little P wave. Now this can look a little bit different from patient to patient. There's a little dip there that's designated as Q. Then there's a peak up here, R. Then it drops down a little bit lower, that's S. And you have another little delay there before the ventricles repolarize, and that's called your T wave that's taking place. The deflections that you see, so they hook up elect, uh, they hook a patient up to electrodes, and it depends on the placement of the electrodes um, as far as what kind of tracing you get on an ECG, because the, the deflections that you see are measuring um, electrical changes, so charge changes, but then also its direction of those charge changes as well. So you might be wondering, looking at that then, okay, well how come the ECG, you get an upward deflection for atrial depolarization, and then you get an upward deflection for ventricular depolarization, um, but then you also get an upward deflection for ventricular repolarization. It seems like, well, if it's repolarizing, why doesn't the wave go down that way in the opposite direction? And it has to do with the direction of the charge changes. The depolarization is more or less 
traveling that way down the heart. And when you repolarize, draw that in blue, the repolarization actually starts down here and travels that way back up through the ventricles. So even though your charge change is different uh, or is opposite, the direction is opposite as well. And so that's why you wind up with this upward deflection on the ECG tracing no matter whether you're depolarizing or uh, repolarizing. Okay, this walks you through what's happening at each little position on an ECG tracing. And again, you're going to see those three peaks are associated with one heartbeat because all this electrical activity is associated with one beat. So when you're looking at the P wave on an ECG, you know, what's going on? You start your depolarization at the SA node, and that is spreading across the walls of the atria. So you're actually seeing that electrical activity generate a P wave on an ECG. Then it arrives at the AV node, and it's by now it's spread all the way across the walls of the atria. You have that pause right in here, right in there. You got that little pause because temporarily you have a little bit of a block as far as that uh, electric, before that electrical impulse is going to spread down the um, AV bundle and on and down into the ventricles. Then your QRS complex or QRS wave occurs. And as that's going on, you're getting this spread of electrical activity down the Purkinje fibers and across the walls of the atria. Um, you have another little gap before the T wave on the electrocardiogram. You know, at that time, the ventricles have completely depolarized. The walls of the ventricle have been stimulated to contract, so you actually have a heartbeat. The uh, ventricular contraction, I'm sorry, contraction of the ventricles is taking place. Then you have your T wave over here, and again, in red, they're showing you repolarization. And um, like I was pointing out on the other slide that repolarization proceeds from the apex of the heart upward so even though you're repolarizing you still get an upward deflection on your ECG tracing then you start the whole process over again you go back over here and the SA node starts to depolarize all over again uh, you might be wondering about well where's uh, atrial repolarization we have to repolarize the atria as well don't we and yes we do if you look on your diagram over here, when the QRS uh, complex is being generated, at that time, the atria are in the process of repolarizing. So the atria are repolarizing at the same time that the ventricles are depolarizing. And again, that's important for heart activity because we want the atria and the ventricles to depolarize and then contract uh, with a little bit of a delay or a little bit separately from each other. So because you've got atrial repolarization taking place at the same time as ventricular depolarization, um, the wave that would be associated with atrial repolarization is masked. It's masked by the bigger wave that's generated as the ventricles depolarize. The walls of the ventricles are thicker, meatier. The myocardium is much thicker there which means you have a lot more cells depolarizing, so you have more electrical activity, more action potentials being generated at the same time. And that's why you have that much taller peak that's associated with that activity. Um, also, you know, well, why is this measured by these electrodes that they stick on your chest? Or, you know, uh, it can also be measured by sticking electrodes on your arm and your legs. And, um, you know, well, how does that work if, if the electrical activity is actually taking place uh, around the heart? So you are actually having electrical changes around the heart. So you have ion changes in the interstitial fluids, the tissue fluids that surround the cells of the heart. And um, that generates an electrical current. Those ions are able to flow away from the heart through your body fluids and uh, you guys know that electricity, electrical currents flow very quickly. So they're actually conducted through your extra, extracellular fluids, you know, everywhere in your body. It's very subtle, but those uh, subtle, slight electrical changes 
that occur can be detected by placing electrodes um, at, at different locations around the body. So electrical changes that are occurring around the heart are causing temporary little ion composition changes in your extracellular fluids all across the whole body with, uh, with each heartbeat. All right, this is a diagram from your textbook which shows you some examples of abnormal electrocardiograms or ECGs. And no, I'm not going to ask you to be able to interpret abnormal ECGs, electrocardiograms. I am certainly not an ECG uh, expert, but I just did want to show you these examples from your textbook and um, how this information can be used to understand what may be happening um, in a patient uh, as far as problems with their heart function. So here's a normal ECG that has a normal sinus rhythm. Remember that means the SA node is in control of the heart. It's depolarizing first and starting that flow of electrical activity. And uh, in B over here, this is an example of a junctional rhythm. And if you guys remember, that's where the SA node is actually not functioning and the AV node becomes the pacemaker for the heart which is going to slow the average heart rate down. It'll be about 40 to 60 beats per minute in a typical patient. And um, if you notice on here, you see a QRS complex and you've got a T wave, but you don't really see a P wave. And that makes sense because the P wave is started by the SA node. So if the SA node's not working, you're not going to have um, a P wave. Also, you know, this electrical activity leads to one heartbeat. Then you have a delay, and then those waves are associated with the next uh, heartbeat. So when a junctional rhythm is occurring, you're going to have more of a separation between those groups of peaks because the heart pace, the heart rate, has been slowed down. Uh, let's see. This one over here is called a second degree heart block. So you do have P waves that are generated, but the AV node is not really functioning all that well. So some of them get conducted through and some of them do not. And so on that type of tracing, like right in here, you've got two P waves right there. Um, and then you have nothing, and then here's another P wave over here. So what happens there is not every P wave leads to a QRS and a T um, because sometimes that electrical impulse is blocked at the AV node and doesn't move forward from there. So imagine if that's happening in a patient, their heartbeat's going to be pretty irregular, right? Because if that electrical signaling does not pass the AV node and move on down into the uh, ventricles, then your uh, ventricles are not going to be stimulated to contract at a normal rate. And then if you are unfortunate enough to be hooked up to an ECG and this appears, this is an indication of ventricular fibrillation or V-fib. And this is where normal rhythmic electrical activity around the heart has been totally uh, disrupted and the ventricles are fibrillating so they're just randomly you have generation of action potentials um, occurring randomly which is stimulating weaker more frequent contractions of the ventricles and uh, they're not able to distribute blood properly throughout the body so that can be a type of tracing you might see uh, during an acute heart attack or MI myocardial infarction where the uh, function of the ventricles has been disrupted and, or after electrical shock, if you received a uh, nasty, life-threatening electrical shock, uh, that can totally screw up the intrinsic conduction system that's regulating the pacing of your heart. And uh, you might see a tracing like that on the ECG. Okay, so now that we've talked about this electrical activity of the heart, we've talked about um, how your cardiac muscle fibers contract, um, we've talked about the valve functions. Now we're going to kind of put all of these things together in lecture number 10 and we're going to talk about the cardiac cycle and this is going to be the story of what happens during one heart 
beat. You know, what are all of the changes around the heart um, that occur to make sure that blood is flowing um, in one direction um, and on some sort of regular rhythm. So we'll talk about that in, in lecture 10.